Good morning. It's time now for Coach's Corner, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Tim Torrance. Thanks for tuning us in. We do it every Saturday morning from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School. We're going to talk girls basketball, Shaw girls basketball with Coach Terry King. Got some others we'll talk to. Assistant Coach Greg Eisen, some players in today, Grace McAllister, Phoebe Grody, and Abigail Hill. We'll talk to them in just a little bit. Coach, good morning to you. Thanks for being in today. Good morning, Tim, and thanks for having us. Uh, been an been a improving season from game one through the last game you played. Yeah, we've first nine games were pretty difficult. We were one and eight, I believe, and really spinning our wheels, not scoring, not playing very good defense. And when we played Crothersville, is the game we kind of feel like things turned around. It was 80 to 40, mm -hmm. but we still saw some good things in the second half. And you know, they're loading up on the bus, and Greg and I are talking, and it's you know, I saw some things there that we've been trying to get them to do all season, right? And they're finally starting to do it. So maybe we've and then we won three in a row, mm -hmm. and then second half of the season we're five and three. And we have been in every one of those games, at least into the third quarter. And right. Usually we'll have a quarter where we have trouble scoring. And even in those games, we got back within five or six in the three that we lost. So one of those games, we lost 53 to five earlier mm -hmm. in the year. Right. We had the lead in the third quarter this time, Borden. And um, and then my, the Milan game, we lost I think 50 to 10 last year, mm -hmm. and it was you know an eight point game this this year, and it was a lot closer than that. It was a game we could have won. What do you what's what's the what's the key? What's, um, what's I the think key? the key and is the, the the girls. Here's how I feel about winning and losing. Mm -hmm. We lost uh, I don't know three or four games ago, and you could tell you could kind of tell that the kids really don't like losing. Right, and. Prior to that, I'm not so sure that was the case. I think they're starting to take some pride in what they're doing. I think they're they're proud to be playing for Shaw now, sure. and um, they've kind of bought into defense. We changed our defense this year, and it's not easy to learn. Right. It's pack line, and it's not easy to learn. And uh, the last seven or eight games, we've just nobody nobody has much. Uh, success scoring in the lane on us. Our only problem right now is closing out mm -hmm. on, on shooters and Milan was huge and we did a nice job. They got 38. They scored 70 something I right. against Southwestern. So our defense I think has really turned us around. Um, we just we f finally made a decision to start pressing mm -hmm. and that has probably won two or three of the five that we won in the last eight, mm -hmm. and I think our press, it's not there yet, and we're going to tweak it again, move some people around, but it's kept us in games, it's, it's given us turnovers. we got to get a lot of shots to win because right. we don't shoot very well mm -hmm. at, at this point, but our defense is what's turned, what has turned things around, and our defense and the fact that the girls really seem to care now. Right. You, you won five games a season ago. <clears throat> kind of take me through last season. Let's kind of recap a little bit. Uh, last season, again, five games. Uh, and, and your first year at Shaw last, last season. Kind of talk about that a little bit. Um, it, was a, it was difficult for me from a standpoint of not being a head coach since 1990-something. <laughs> and prior to that, prior to that, 1981 at Southwestern. Then at Hanover College a couple of years, and Greg and I were varsity assistants at Madison. But I hadn't been a head coach for for quite a while, mm -hmm. and uh, that's all I'd ever been. Right. And when they called me, approached me to do this, I was kind of at a low point in my life, and I needed something to do. But it took me three weeks to decide. I, I one day I wanted to do it. One day I didn't. Want right. It. And it's been good for me. Last year was a struggle, and Kate got hurt. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I will tell you this, and I think this this year's group, especially the last seven or eight games, are really, really playing well together as a team. Mm -hmm. We don't have any outstanding scores. Grace is pretty much 10 and 10 every night, right. and we're really going to miss that. But the other kids are starting to score, and it seems like every night someone gets six or eight points. And uh, I didn't feel real comfortable around the kids last year. I'll be right. honest with you. I didn't know any of them. Right. You know, I maybe knew Abigail a little bit, right. but I feel really comfortable around these guys this year. It's fun to go to practice the last few weeks. 
they're starting to buy in. It's fun. We're enjoying it, and uh, I just there's a great group of kids. You know that. Yeah. When 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 you put together a, a team and a program, you're looking for. Uh, as many numbers as you will as you can get. Last year's numbers were low. This year's numbers are much better. Last year's numbers were at the at the high point, maybe eight. Mm -hmm. Most of the year, six or seven. We went to the sectional with five. Yeah. Grace had a concussion in the sectional. We're playing with four. We're just, you know, we teams can't beat teams cannot beat us like that now. Right. I mean, we're going to run up against teams that are really good teams. Sure. We don't go. We don't get beat fifty to ten anymore. Right. So. Uh, our numbers are up to 14. We graduate Grace, which is a huge loss. I'm sure we'll lose a couple kids. You always do, and but I think we're going to pick a couple up too. So I expect to be somewhere around that next year, and then the year after that, we've got a bunch of seventh graders. And I, I just feel like we're kind of on an upswing. I'd like to do this five more years. Yeah. If they if, if they'll have me, <laughs> I can't see me going much longer than that. Right. I, Oh, I'd rather be on the beach <laughs> in about five years right. doing not a lot. So, right. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. And if you don't enjoy it, mm -hmm. and at certain points early in this year, I yeah. wasn't enjoying it. Well, and if and if you're not comfortable with it and you're not enjoying it, they won't be either. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Yeah. I still believe it was the Crothersville game, but they just started to care. Mm -hmm. For some reason, you could see that they were starting to care about this. Mm -hmm. And practices are more fun. Games are fun. Uh, win or lose, we're, we're, we're making a lot of improvement. We really are. And I still think we can win eight or nine games. And when you think last year we won five. Right. And uh, I, we have, without a doubt, probably the best player in the area. Right. So these guys are really playing well as a team. You you you're always building through the season for sectional sectional coming up in, in a couple three weeks and um, you want to be playing your best basketball. So to get that rough spot out of the out of the system so to speak in the first half and then play better in the second half yeah. is good timing. Yeah. And I'm not naive. I know who's in our section. Right. I, and I just want to improve. I just right. want to improve and get better each year. Um, it'd be nice to win a couple games in the sectional, but it's just so much fun seeing the improvement in these guys. And when yeah. people, it, it happens on a daily basis. When people say, man, you guys have really improved. You look like a different team from the beginning of the season. And that, yeah, it makes you feel good. Yeah. And I try to pass it on to these guys um, so that they realize it's not going, uh, going unnoticed. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, my expectations are to win eight or nine games. And when you consider Five yeah. last year. That's yeah. I mean, that's a pretty good improvement. We have eight freshmen, and yeah. you know we're young. So. Right, coach. Let's uh, let's kind of kind of give me your your process between seasons. Between season one, between season uh, been one and two. What was yours and, and Greg's kind of mindset on? Okay, this is what we did. This is what we we had. This is what's coming up. This is what we. What do you What do you need to do? What's your planning? Well, the process going into last year, we were hired late, and we really didn't have a summer. Mm -hmm. This past summer was not, uh, you know, as active as I would like it to be. But they did go to a camp. They went to a um, McCracken camp up north. I'm I'm okay with camps. I think mm -hmm. camps are good. I think they're good for more than anything team bonding, right. that kind of thing. Sure. But uh, you know, we tried to get kids into the gym. Some showed up, some didn't. Right. And you know how that goes during the summer. This summer, this this upcoming summer is as important as any summer I, I I've mm -hmm. since I've been involved in coaching. Right. We're going to lose ten and ten every night. Mm -hmm. We've got to find scoring from somewhere. We're going to have the same kids back, adding a couple eighth graders. Um, <laughs> Some kids have to develop during the summer, and I don't care if I get them all there together in a group. I don't care if it's individual, but every one of these kids has to get into the gym at least a couple times a week and find time to shoot and work on their game. And uh, if they can do that, I think we can repeat next season what we did this season right. and only get a little bit better, better start. Well, it's, it's so hard to get kids to understand and, and buy into the fact of how important summer is. We've talked about them from day one about being responsible and being accountable mm -hmm. and being on time and not missing practice, not missing games. And I, 
probably isn't a player on the team that hasn't had to sit because of missing a practice or missing a game. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I would guess that they probably didn't believe we would set them, mm -hmm. but we have and we will, and they know that, and attendance has been much better, effort has been much better, and they know if we say if you don't do this or you don't do that, you're going to be over there sitting with us, and I think they believe us now. Well, being again, it's, it's being held accountable for your actions, and, and you right. know, as a coach, you talk about that all the time, and, and doing what you need them to do. And again, in, at the end of the day, the bottom line is trying to get them better. Right. I mean, it's if we're going to if we're going to put our time in, into this, and we put a lot of time in it, we expect them to do their part. Right. And you can't not show up during the summer, and then and then go 0 and 10 to start the season and and point fingers at the coaches. Right. You got to point fingers at in the mirror. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you're not there, you're not going to get better and if you don't get better, we don't get better as a team. Mm -hmm. And the kids that are key players have to set by example and be there. You look at, at the schedule again, you lost the first three, uh, picked up a win uh, against Medora, lost uh, five more, and then got uh, what uh, four out of, of five losing to Borden, but a much better Borden game, as you mentioned. Oh, yeah, yeah. We beat Borden last year, but it was just, I think Kate might have gone for 30. Right. You know, but this year it's much more balanced. And I think the Borden coach was a little surprised yeah. after 53 to 5 early right. in the year. He was a little surprised. He made the comment, well, "You guys have, uh, you know, improved." Mm -hmm. I said, "Well, thank you. We have." <laughs> yeah. And that game, and then uh, the other one we lost was mm, refresh my memory. Uh, let's see. You lost to Oldenburg Academy. Oldenburg. Yeah. And we were in that game. We, mm -hmm. you know, we. It wasn't one of our better games, but we did play hard. We were in that game, and then the Milan game, we were in that game. I would say we could have won two or, two or three of those right. with, if we just shot better. Well, and it's and it's giving yourselves a chance. As, right. It always is. Our defense is giving us a chance to mm -hmm. be in games. Our right. defense is fun to watch. Right. And you and you you apparently feed your offense off your what your defense does. Yeah. Now that we're starting to press, we're hoping to get some baskets off the press. Mm -hmm. um, we're getting steals off the press, but sometimes we're just handing the ball right back to you. you know? <laughs> if we can get it, if we can get that to the point where we can convert the steals mm -hmm. off the press to layups, right? It's really it will really help. So. Well, well, and you talked earlier about changing the defense and changing the scheme, and and then again, you know, you're getting you're trying to get kids to buy into certain aspects of the game, and now you're going to turn after season one and change the defense. How how receptive was that? Well, from day one, we, from day one, we mentioned pack line, and they're like, you know, what is pack line? And we had tape on the floor, and yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Bennett from Virginia. I'm mm -hmm. a big fan of his dad. I'm a big big fan of uh, uh, Mac. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of anyone that plays pack line. Yeah, because pack line is for a team that is not ultra athletic. But they're smart mm -hmm. and they're quick, right? And and we're smart and we're quick, mm -hmm. and we're not overly athletic, but we're athletic enough, and we've got some kids that are really quick. So the main thing is to be in there. I tell them every day. We tell them every day before we before practice, before a game. We tell them on the ball, in the gap, or. Help. The help side, you know, and they're doing it, right? And they're starting to do it. And when you when you do it and do it the right way, it's it's really fun to watch. It, it defense works much better if you're playing a step ahead than a step behind. Yeah, always. It, yeah, it really does. And and we don't we we invite teams to beat us from outside. Sure. And if you're hot that night and you beat you. Go for it. Right. And uh, we we need to do a better job closing out. But uh, if teams are going to beat us, they're going to beat us outside because they are not going to beat us in the lane. Right. And uh, it's almost like a zone, but it's it's a combination, mm -hmm. in my opinion, of zone man to man. Mm -hmm. Our on the ball defense has really been good. Our guards have really. Um, we put Phoebe usually on um, the other team's best ball handler, mm -hmm. Phoebe or Callie. Mm -hmm. And Callie's a freshman. Sometimes Callie's not where Callie's supposed to be. Right. And she's just like an energized bunny. She just never, but she, a lot of times she'll find herself out of position. But then she'll make up for it and get a steal. Mm -hmm. So they, our guards put, that was the key uh, against Milan. Our guards put a lot of pressure on their guards, and they had a hard time getting the ball inside. 
a lot of times they would lob and lob it out of bounds. Sure. And that's because they didn't have good vision of their post players. Right, so, yeah. right. Uh, you want to mention your girls? You get sure. What you got? Um, I'll, I'll just start with. <coughs> let me go through all. Sure. All of your, okay, I'll yeah. start with uh, freshman. We've got Lauren Grody, uh, Peyton Locke. Lauren has played a little bit with us on the varsity. She's. Uh, Tenacious. Mm -hmm. uh, she's going to be a good defensive player. We got Carson Cook. Carson's, I think, is going to be a good rebounder. She needs to work on her shooting. Emmalina Leatherman's very athletic. We need to get. She needs to be there, and when she's there, she right. might be able to help us. Angela Morales uh, Vasquez. Vasquez. I'm sorry. Um, she's really got a nice shot. Mm -hmm. I don't think. No, she played a lot in the eighth grade, but she has a really nice shot. Uh, she may be the best for, form and everything right. on the entire team. She mm -hmm. just just needs some confidence and needs to play. Um, other freshmen, Katie Jacobs. Katie's built for basketball. Right. Katie's going to help us in the future mm -hmm. big time. Um, Autumn Lathrum, she's, she starts most of the time. Mm -hmm. She's uh, very aggressive, kind of like Callie Alderman. Callie would be next. They're very aggressive, and I, I think that part of the – Part of our turnaround is the fact that everyone else, they feed off of each other right. and they see these guys be aggressive and they, I better be aggressive or right. I might lose some playing time. Right. You know? So, um, Lena Leatherman is a sophomore. Uh, Lena's, if Lena would decide that she wants to be a basketball player, Lena could be a very good basketball player. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a big – and I told Greg, I've seen a big change in her attitude since Christmas. Right. I don't know what happened. I don't know if teammates have are pushing her. I don't know right. what, but I see a big change in her. And I just hope it continues. We've got Marilee Perez as a sophomore. Marilee plays mostly JV and uh, Jasmine Cox as a sophomore. Um, juniors, they have Abigail. Abigail is a streaky shooter. Abigail can shoot the ball when she's spotted up, but she needs to be spotted up and shoot it right. in, with proper form. Phoebe. Phoebe, we were real concerned about Phoebe's ball handling mm -hmm. because losing Kate, she's got to step in. And it was a little shaky in the beginning. Right. She's turned into a really, really good point guard. She handles the ball. When we get the ball, I'm yelling at her to go get the ball. Right. Go get the ball. Uh, she's she's improved her ball handling tremendously. She passes the ball better. Mm -hmm. she, defense was never an issue, and she's right. shooting the ball better. We right. Tried to tweak something in her shot, and she shoots the ball better. Um, same with Abigail. Abigail's if when she shoots it properly and right. she's set up, she, right. she shoots the ball pretty well. And Grace. Grace does everything for us. Grace rebounds. Uh, like I said, 10 10. You can just, you know, every night you're going to get somewhere around 10 and 10, maybe a little bit under that, one way or the other, right. a lot of times over that. Right. So she's 14 and 8, I believe, against Milan. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lena, Lena had 10 rebounds against those girls. So yeah. we're going to miss her. Right. Um, she never causes any problems uh, most of the time. <laughs> she keeps things light. In practice, uh, if she yeah. needs to, we need to get on her. We get on her. Yeah. I don't know what she says when she <laughs> goes away, but she takes it pretty well, and they all seem to do that. So, right. Coach, I know you mentioned the, the three that's here with you today, and I've spent time with all three of them, especially this one. She's I've spent way too much time with Grace than I have Abigail and Phoebe, but uh, Grace is she's a, pl a pleasure to be around. She's as you mentioned, she keeps things pretty light most of the time but talk about talk about the girls well I would like to mention one thing before we go sure and that's Greg Greg's been my assistant the last two years sure. we've coached together at Madison we've known each other forever he, when he was at Madison coaching I was at Southwestern right uh, I don't know how well we got along then but, you know <laughs> <laughs> but I've known him forever our daughters are friends we've taken vacations together and it, it's really important to have someone sure coaching with you that you can get along with because right. I've you know you've had those years where that's not maybe the case right so it just makes it easy sure. to bounce off of each other sure. argue sometimes about certain things right. and that's just the way it is it's so, just the way it works um, talk about grace grace uh, grace is a great kid and like they said at senior night she she will be successful in whatever she decides mm -hmm. to do she's just that kind of kid she is that kind of kid and, uh, 
Sometimes she says things and does things in practice, as you well know, that just don't make sense, but it kind of lightens the mood. You it know? does. And, it absolutely uh, does. We are going to miss her. I've had a lot of seniors graduate, and you miss them all. Mm -hmm. You miss most of them. Yeah. We're going to really miss her. Yeah. She's just a, she's a great kid. Gives you no issues. Does everything you ask her to do. Mm -hmm. And there's never never a negative with her. So. Good morning. Good morning. I guess I better turn your mic up so you can be on. Now let's try to get good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. You got your pancake. You got your pancakes. You uh, all yeah. good. All right, this yeah. All right. Good deal. <laughs> um, talk about your basketball season. Your senior year. What's it been like? Um, so I was really worried at first because last year we didn't have that many and we were trying to get girls and we are like, come on, play, play. And they came out and this is probably my favorite team. We're all so close together. Like the freshmen, they're my best friends. Like, mm -hmm. And so we were losing at first and I was like, you know, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. At least we have a team. And then we started winning and seeing like what we could do together and I think that's just really great. You, you see that it's contagious but it starts at the top with the seniors and it comes comes down the line with you do you do you help the underclassmen? Yeah I think I help them I mean I try to I talk to them and like oh just take a step over or mm -hmm. take the shot like just kind of encouraging to build some confidence. What was what was your um, anticipation for the for your senior year in basketball what did you what did you want to accomplish personally um, personally I wanted to score more mm -hmm. I wanted to look to take the ball and not just like pass it off and I just wanted to have a good year just and so far so far it's been good so far it's been good it's always a learning experience and you're going to leave what every senior leaves and that's a little bit of legacy from you to hopefully that carries on for the younger for the younger kids uh, talk about going to school I, I we've talked about this before but <laughs> talk about what's happening um so i do not know what college i'm going to mm -hmm. still but i'm going to major in animal science with a pre-vet focus with a pre-vet focus best of luck thank you all right More uh, kid. That's, yeah very, very much so We'll move over to Junior Phoebe Grady. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, talk about your um, basketball season. I think it started off a little rough, but we've definitely improved. I've seen a lot of improvement in the freshmen, and I definitely do not think we could have done it without them. Mm -hmm. They help us out a lot, and Grace has improved so much. That, I mean, she really helps the team. Well, and it, it kind of it, – it, Holds the same for basketball as it did in volleyball. Grace is the only senior. You guys are juniors, trying to help the underclassmen, and you got to step. Even as a junior, you got to step up and help the underclassmen. And how 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 are they receptive to that? They usually take it pretty well. I try to keep my cool with them and not to help them because I think of last year. Kate kind of would go off on us mm -hmm. and. It was hard, but I try to just talk them through it, give them some pointers, and then <coughs> they usually just like take it well, and they're like, okay, like I'll try to do that, because they want to have as much playing time as anybody else. Right. How, how's your expectations been for your season? Are you, are you kind of doing what you think you, you need to do and want to do? Yeah, I think so. I was worried last year, because Kay was our best ball handler, right. and I was like, is it going to go to me or Abigail? Mm -hmm. And then when I had to become the ball handler at first, it was kind of nerve-wracking mm -hmm. but I think that it's helped me improve a lot by having the ball so much. It, a lot of pressure on a point guard there's there's a lot of decisions to be made and there's a lot of last second decisions to be made you're not going to make them all right all the time but having direction and having confidence and that's uh, you, do you have confidence? I would say I do yeah. and I think most of it comes from my team as yeah. well. They put themselves in the right positions to yeah. yeah. For sure. you. All right. Thanks for being here this morning. Thank you. All right. Abigail, good morning. Good morning. Uh, talk about your basketball season so far. Um, I think it's been pretty good. We, I mean, again, it started out a little rocky. Right. But our first half of the season, we played some really tough teams, so that was kind of expected. But now we're working as a team and we're becoming one with each other, so it's gotten a lot better. Has things improved to the point where you feel comfortable? Yes and no. Mm -hmm. It's, I don't know, I think we just, all of us need to work on certain things and we just need to improve even more so that we can, I mean, we've stayed in games 
but that we can possibly win some and you know just kind of like well and, and two it's losing is never fun and losing big is never ever fun yeah. but growing is the most important thing from whatever happens have you grown as a team definitely um like coach said i mean we lost to borden five to 53 and mm -hmm. that was what our third or fourth game of yeah. the season and obviously that took us we just didn't know what to think after that but now we played them again and it was only an eight point game mm -hmm. like that's huge for us mm -hmm. you guys um you have a little bit more left in the season um an opportunity today to pick up a, a win over south central um you guys looking to win every game I mean, mentally, are you looking to win every game? Yes, just because I think we're getting better. Mm -hmm. So we say to ourselves, let's go out there and let's try our hardest and let's win this one because we know that we can do it now. Because at first, the first start of the season, we were like, oh, gosh, we, we didn't know how this was going to look. But now we know that we can do it and we have the skills and we have the confidence, too. Right. Thanks for being here this morning. Thank you. Coach, uh, West Washington, the sectional location this season. Uh, Six-team sectional, uh, Medora, Crothersville, West Washington, Edinburgh, Trinity Lutheran, and Shaw. Trinity Lutheran right now sits at 19-2. and two. They're the, the, the top winning team so far. Edinburgh at 12-5, and five. Crothersville at 10-8, and eight. West Washington at 8-9. and nine. You guys sit at 6-11, and 11. and Medora is 0-13. I've seen stranger things happen in the postseason. Yeah, um, you know, we're not strangers to playing good teams. Right. Like Greg just mentioned to me, you know, mention who we played at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. We played a team that was ranked second in the state, a team that was ranked seventh in the state, and then South Ripley, then Southwestern, then Scottsburg, and right. on and on and on. And when we were one and eight, and I told these guys that if they would do some of the clean up some of the stuff, I said, we're going to win a bunch of, I don't know if they believe me or not, right. but hopefully they do now. Right. And as far as our sectional, we know they're good. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? We're not going to, it's not going to be, it's not going to be 50 to 1 right. after three quarters right. of this year. It's, yeah. it's not just not. And no matter, regardless of right. who we play, mm -hmm. we will play hard. Mm -hmm. And we will hopefully play well and hopefully get a win or two in the section. This, we, is, we, this is the best time of the year to start believing in yourselves. Yeah, we believed in them yep. all year. Right. It was kind of wavering about halfway right. through. But, <laughs> right. But we believed in them all year. The difference now is, mm -hmm. and if you're not there every day, you don't see it. But the difference now is I think they are starting right. to believe in themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think they're starting to take a little bit of pride in playing for Shaw right. instead of that culture of, oh, here we go again. Right. We're going to get beat. We're gonna, no, that's, we don't accept right. that. Right. So, um, yeah, we're, we're definitely playing better mm -hmm. and at a good time. Absolutely. So. Coach, we appreciate you being here today. Best of luck against South Central. That is a 12.30 JV start. 12.30, I believe. Yep, 12.30 yeah. JV start. We appreciate you being here this Thank week. Thank you very much, Tim. All right. No problem. That's uh, Coach Terry King. Also, uh, Assistant Coach Greg Eisen in. Abigail Hill, Phoebe Grody, Grace McAllister in with us today as well. We will do it again next week live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. We'll have Danny Hambrick in next week from Shaw Memorial. Uh, that will go uh, next Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Thanks to Jordan Bear in studio. Until next time, I'm Tim Torrance, live from McDonald's on Works 96.7. Down here, we like good coffee that's freshly brewed and breakfast that suits your fancy, like a sausage biscuit with egg or sausage gravy and biscuit, now just two bucks each. McDonald's, Southern-inspired, Southern-approved. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba!